everybody, DJ here. This video is going to be on looking at Radeon Pro Render and the glass shading and materials. And I made this video because Juliano Lisboa asked me if I could make a video explaining glass caustics in Pro Render. So I figured this would be a good time to just sort of take a look at the RPR Uber node using the refraction uh, shading and let you guys know some really cool effects that you can do on your objects and how you can shade some really neat glass materials along with uh, some basics on what the caustics are. So before we begin, please go ahead and hit the uh, subscribe button there and the like button, and we'll jump inside of Blender and take a look at how ProRender handles glass materials. So here's the session here. I have a frame or just this uh, composition here, and yep, you guessed it, that's Suzanne, the monkey that's from Blender. And we're going to use this to basically look at how glass is shaded inside of this engine. So if I add a, I already have some materials here, so I'm not gonna start completely from scratch. I already have it called glass and I have something else in here. But basically, anytime you start a new material, you go over here and hit new material, all that kind of stuff. But I'm gonna show you from scratch. So if I go in here, add a shader, RPR Uber. And if I go down here and I take the material output, and plug that right in there to the surface. You start off just as standard with this sort of shading here. And what we really wanna to do to make this glass, very simple. Uh, we don't need diffuse, so I'm just gonna turn that off. I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn on the refraction here. And where it says right here, reflection use shader normal, um, right underneath that it says metalness. Click that and go to IOR. And now you're using the index of refraction for this reflection here. And you already get some kind of a decent effect here. And uh, this is basically what the standard glass shading would look like. Now we're gonna make some adjustments here. I'm gonna take the reflection roughness here and I'm going to put that down to a zero. And what we're seeing as this is rendering is we're seeing basically a perfectly smooth non-rough surface. And we're seeing how the caustics are being calculated inside of um, this engine just naturally. Now I have the website open here and right here on the Radeon Pro Render website where it explains how everything works, it says, you know, basically if you can read all of this stuff if you want, but basically it starts off like this. So when a, the caustics are off, you have basically this here. So the light is coming through and the ray is casting these uh, colored sort of like uh, refracted, basically the refracted color. So the rays come off of there and they bounce around or at least tries to approximate what the bouncing around would do with real glass. And then there you have the coloring effect. Now, if you're not seeing a bright image like this, just a disclaimer, what you'll need to do is go over to your rendering properties, go over to the quality. So drop down the quality here and go to where it says clamping and change this to a 10. If you do a one, it starts off, it starts off just like standard at a one. Uh, that default setting will kind of darken your image and you won't see as nice of a glass effect as you know you see in cycles. Cycles starts off at a 10. So that's why in general, when people don't check that when they're doing some pro render uh, tests compared to cycles, if you don't change this radiance here, you're going to end up with a more dull object, especially with glass and stuff like that. I mean, obviously it really depends on what you're doing, but to make this look really nice and bright and to see this sort of stuff here, you wanna make sure that the clamp radiance is at at least a 10. Now, if we take a look at this right here, um, the other thing I'm gonna show you in a little bit is how I did the lighting, but uh, let's just take a look at this right now. So you see this sort of like effect right here. If I change the, the refraction color, so if I zoom in here and I change this to a blue or something like that, you can see that now that ray casted uh, color there of what's hitting this uh, glass object, it's now changed to this teal blue color. But if I go up here and I select this right here, and I'm actually gonna zoom in a bit so you can see this a little bit closer. So if we're looking at this right here and you click on the allow caustics, you can see that it looks much different. It's more dark and the color effect, you can see that right there, 
the color effect isn't as obvious. And this is a more realistic way of representing what the uh, refracted color of the shadow would be if it was hit by this type of lighting. So obviously it depends on the project that you're doing as with anything, but this is going to take a little bit longer to render, but also give you a more realistic result. So that's basically what the caustics are there. Okay, it has to do with how the light hits the glass object and then casts that shadow with the colored glass or whatever it is that you're, you're using for the inside of the glass being projected here onto your surface. So if we cha change the uh, refraction, the refraction IOR to something more severe, like a 2.4 or something like that, you can see that it's, you know, affecting the glass in a particular way and the pools of light that are uh, guided by that coloring is a little bit more obvious than it was before. So, you know, depending on what you're creating, what kind of glass object, you should be looking up online, doing a quick Google search or something like that. And that will show you or at least tell you what the refraction of the, um, the index of refraction should be for that object to help you create a more realistic uh, material. Now, the other thing that's really great about this uh, shader is how it handles the refraction absorption distance. And basically what that means is it's kind of like a volumetric effect. So when you use this, it will actually color the glass, but it will only be more colorful in the areas that are more like thick or there's more distance between on the inside of the object. So obviously the best way to show that is by actually, you know, doing it. And if I take the refraction absorption distance here. And if I change this to a one, let's just say, you didn't really see anything change there. And if I change it to a 50, let's just say, you don't see anything either, not really. And that's because the refraction absorption really works well when you change the color. So I'm gonna change this to a orange or a yellow. And just to show you how this works a little bit more clearly, I'm going to take this white RGB value, I'm going to pipe that into the refraction color. And now you can see there's a little bit of effect here, but it's not really obvious. So I'm going to change this absorption distance to a 1.0. And there you can see that basically the glass is being colored based on how, you know, the thickness of that glass. And it's all dependent on how you look at it and, you know, the actual geometry of the object. You can see that the ears are more clear and the more thick areas here are more colored and if i change this to a 0.1 it's even more apparent that the glass has a coloring on the inside and if i change this to let's say a 50 it's not as obvious and let's put it at something like a 15 or something like that so it's a little bit slight eh, it's a little bit hard to see let's try a five so there's a five right there. So you can see that there's a nice little coloring effect right here and in some of the areas. So it's not so just straight up white and clear like a uh, cheap glass. It is, there's some sort of coloring effect to it, which makes it look really unique and really interesting. One thing I'll tell you about the scene here is the lights I've used. And I'm gonna go ahead and change this to a solid view here. To really get a good glass effect, at least in my opinion, plus the shadows, what you need to use for Radeon Pro Render is not point lights. What you need to use are area lights. So if I go over here to my lights, you can see that I'm using area and I have a disc here. I have a plane here and then I have a long plane in the back. Okay. So I prefer this over using an object like a plane itself, like an actual 3D shape to use the emission because it, even though that's more realistic, using these uh, area lights saves time on your render, at least from what I've seen. So that's why I use that, especially for things like glass. So uh, let's take a little bit of a closer look here at the shadows and I'll show you what happens when you use a point light versus anything else. So I'm gonna turn off the fill and the backlight and I am going to zoom in on this section over here. And if I go to the rendered view, and we take a look at this, you can see that there's a really nice little soft shadow right here. Now, if I change this to a point light, and I'm not gonna change the, um, the power because you'll see it like straight away, you can see that there's this really harsh line in the shadow. 
And the glass itself, it's not really lit up the same way. I would have to change this power here to get a little bit more bright. But the way that point lights are calculated inside of ProRender do not allow soft shadows. So to keep this looking really, really nice with uh, a way to control how soft and how harsh these shadows are, I recommend using area lights and uh, changing the size. So um, it looks like they are actually trying in here to... It, I have a newer build, by the way, of ProRender, but all this stuff that I'm talking about should work for yours. Um, I'm using a development build. Let's see if any of this actually works. Um, so put that at a 2. I'm not really seeing much of a difference. Let's try something extreme like a 10. Nope, I don't see any difference. So it looks like they're trying to work on the uh, shadows, uh, the soft shadows for these, but they're just not working yet. So um, that's all fine. Um, the area lights work just fine for stuff like this. So let's go ahead and turn back on all of these. And I do have a shader that I already made. So if we look at this shader here that I really like, um, I actually have a normal and I have a roughness map you can see here. I have a roughness map on here from an Im image map. I have a bump map, so it's a, just a little bit more uh, unique and interesting. So you see this really neat, let me turn off the overlays here. You can see this really neat effect of this like uh, greenish color here and um, it just overall has a really nice effect to this particular type of glass. So I have a couple other shapes that I can show you how you know the different shapes are affected by this. So if I turn off Suzanne here and I have a little bit of a I have a little prism shape here that I'll turn on. And sometimes just to reset the uh, the rendering, I will go to the uh, either solid or the wireframe and then back to the render. And so here's the sort of like a prism shape. And I'm going to go ahead and pull out the refraction color here and just show you some fun stuff that you can do with the absorption, the refraction absorption. So I'm going to de disconnect this RGB. And I'm going to change this refraction to something more like a 5. And you can see you can get some really fun effects by changing these values. So now I have sort of like this yellowish glass piece. And depending on how the light is hitting that object, you can get some really fun effects with the geometry of the object. So let's go ahead and turn on one more thing. I'm going to throw in an object inside of this prism. So here you have basically a glass sphere that's shaded exactly the same as this prism or this uh, triangular piece here. And you can really see how the uh, volume absorption is working between these two objects. So each one has the exact same shading and you get these really fun, interesting, neat effects by using uh, this shader. So just to show you another really fun thing here, I have a different object. I have a regular sort of wine glass. And for this one, I basically just have a little tiny bit of the volume absorption on this object. So if I go ahead and select that and we take a look at the shading, let's actually stop this for a second so I can grab. So if you look at this here, I have a refraction absorption distance of five, and then I have this color here. But the color, the refraction color, is just a white. And we get this really fun, really neat effect here where the thickness of the glass is going to add that little bit of coloring that you'll see on a lot of different types of glass. And if you change this, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to click on the allow caustics here just to make it a little bit more realistic. Sometimes it's not as obvious as other objects in the shadows. But if I change this here to like a 0.5 instead of a 5, you can see that now the whole glass is being shaded with that. And it changes how deep that color is depending on how thick it is and your viewpoint on that object. So if I change this to like a 2.0, you can see that it's a little bit more obvious than it was when I originally had it. And then a five to me seems pretty realistic. It seems like it's kind of like a glass that's got a little bit of that color change. And it seems like something that you can actually see on a table somewhere in a restaurant. 
I want to show you one more thing, and it has to do with the angle of an object and how that might have something to do with how you're viewing uh, particular nuances about that glass shading. And so I have this here, which is basically a plane that's been, uh, I did an array and an object offset, so you can kind of see how the different angles will change how you're viewing or the, uh, the look of this particular glass piece. And to sort of make this a little bit more clear on why I want to show you this, if you've ever looked at a piece of acrylic or particular types of glass, you'll notice that at the very edges, there tend to be, um, it tends to look a little bit green or a little bit blue or something like that. So if I take this here and I take an RGB value and I throw that into the refraction color, just like this here, you can see that I now get that effect. So here it's not as prevalent because it's not you know directed right at us for our uh, eye line. But as it gets more and more in line with us, we can see through the object and you get that colored effect right there on the edge. So if you're doing something like architectural visualization or something like that where you're gonna see the edge of that piece and you're frustrated because you can't seem to get that glass to look correctly from the side or something like that, this can help you achieve that goal. One more thing I'm going to mention before we go, you need to make sure that when you are setting your render, that you be sure that the amount of max ray depth for the refraction and glossy objects in your scene actually match what you want it to be. So your shadows, your refraction, your glossy, everything like that is your what you're seeing here in your viewport and your final render is going to be dependent on this. So if I set a refraction to zero, for example, as you can expect, there are really no passes that are happening with the refraction. If I set it to a one, you're going to have one pass of refraction, which is not quite enough for this scene. And if you set it up to like a five or something like that, it may be good enough. And oftentimes what I do is I will set this, if I want a really high resolution render, I will set this up to a 50 or whatever the total may be, just so that I make sure that I'm getting as high quality pass as I can. If I'm doing an animation, obviously I'd do something different, but if I'm if I'm doing something really, really high quality, I'll make sure to set all of my uh, ray depths to as max as it can go, just so I can make sure that I have a really, really good and clean image, or at least the best looking, brightest image I can possibly have. The other thing that you need to make sure that you have done correctly is that your ray cast epsilon here, uh, if you've messed around with it and put it at like a 0.05 or something like that, that may screw up some things to do with the uh, object in your scene. So you'll have to read up a little bit on that on the ProRender website on what this actually does. I'm not going to go over that in detail in this particular tutorial, but you can see there I put it on zero and it kind of screwed some things up. So it has to do with how the uh, scene is being rendered. Uh, but, you know, if you see something weird happening, try increasing this a little bit or setting it at point two, which is the default, and seeing if that resolves any potential issues that you can see in your render. So that's basically gonna be it for this tutorial. I really just wanted to take the time to kind of explain how the shading and the materials worked. And just FYI, I am using a development build. I believe I said that earlier, but I really wanna drive that point home. Everything that I'm talking about works in the RPR 1.0, so when you're uh, selecting your different render settings here. Make sure that you're on full. And if you have any sort of development builds, this is not going to work on the 2.0 because volumetrics are not supported as of right now. So you're not going to get the same effects. And it's kind of buggy. So I wouldn't use that anyway. But full works just fine. And you can get some really beautiful renders. So if you have any more questions or you want me to go over anything in more detail regarding glass and how I'm doing the shading and all that, please go ahead and leave a comment or a question below in the comment section. And I'll see you guys next time on DJ Tutorials.